welcome to episode 24 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk and today is the 21st of September and welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for giving me a go if you haven't listened before and thanks for coming back if you've put up with me on a previous occasion. <laughs> um, so the podcast is all about all the crafty things. I like to um, show you all the crafty things that I've been up to. I like to do a range of things like sewing and knitting and cross stitch and bobbin lace and things. So I'd like to show you what I've been up to this time. You can find me on social medias such as Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Ravelry as Craft Ice Magic. And I also have a website craftisemagic.co.uk where you can find links to, to all the social media sites as well as the Etsy shop. So what do we have this time? So we've got some few bits of knitting, some dressmaking, some cross stitch, some dyeing, some bobbin lace, the usual blast from the past and gadget. Um, just a couple of confessions. <laughs> For those of you who haven't watched before, those are my purchases which are rather naughty. <laughs> Um, I've got a few questions from the Ask Me Anything thread on the Ravelry group um, and I've got some bags to show you that will be in the shop update on the 1st of October at 7 o'clock so if you want to have a look at those they'll be at the end of the podcast but you don't have to listen if you're not interested. So we've got two knit alongs going on. We've got the doodle along um, which finishes at the end of October so you've still got plenty of time to finish your doodlers. Um, that's the doodler pattern by Stephen West. We've got the two prizes which will be the fondant fibre bag, uh, knitting project bag and the Stephen West pattern uh, for those that will be drawn at the end of October. We've also got the happy along. So the happy along is where you knit something for yourself or gifts for other people that make you happy. It's basically to uh, sort of encompass Christmas knitting and other bits and bobs so that we don't discriminate people that aren't Christians. Um, I also want to say sorry for the, the error on the end of the um, the video again. It's to do with the software I've been using but um, now I'm switching software so hopefully if the podcast is up you'll know that I've got to grips with the new software. <laughs> so I was using uh, Windows uh, Movie Maker but apparently the software isn't supported anymore by updates so there's some little blips happening so I've just switched so hopefully we'll be okay from now on <laughs> sorry guys about that so we better get into the good stuff so first of all we're doing knitting so I've got finished objects we've got one finished object this time and it's my doodler shawl so it's quite big actually it's much bigger than I anticipated because I thought it was coming up quite a lot smaller than other people's and it's difficult to kind of hold it up but there we go I think that that's going to be a lovely wear I thought I'd just show you how I thought I might wear it because it's a bit of an awkward shape really to know what to do so whether um, this actually will look nice when I do it on the podcast I don't know so I really like this area here where I've got cables um, and the beginning of the shawl so I was thinking of putting like a shawl pin here so I'll have all the waves on show so that's really pretty I'm really pleased about that um, so I did some little changes on the end of section three so section three is the wavy bit around the edge what I did is I added um, where there's a row where there's like um, a lacy row I did that row on the next three rows um, in this paler blue colour which is this one here to give it a bit of a striped effect actually this first one I did I only did two rows and found that you couldn't really see it very much so then for the next ones I did four and I think it works quite nicely having a thinner stripe here compared to the ones further down I did actually use up all of my um, blue life in the long grass colour um, which is quite good um, and I think I had about 70 grams left of the in total of the other two yarns so I think there was 50 grams of the aubergine left um, and 30 grams of this life in the long grass I can't think what it was called if you look at my Ravelry page you can see what it's called um, left so um, because I'm a tight knitter I could then I actually could use colour A which is this one as stripes down the shawl 
absolutely love these wavy bits really cool so I blocked it out uh, on some blocket mats and luckily it was dry this morning so that's brilliant so I can show you so there we go you can't get it all in the shot <laughs> my finished objects for this week so on to works in progress works in progress in terms of knitting I went and picked up my Gonyev shawl that I'd been knitting a little while ago ah I don't understand why I'd put this down because it is really lovely I think it's just because um, I wasn't sort of bored of it but I was distracted by other things so I just didn't pick it up but I've done since the progress keeper since I last showed it to you and it's got this really lovely textured pattern um, it's pronounced Gonyev, but it's it's spelt rather differently. So I'll pop the name of the, the shawl on the screen. And the pattern's by Ruth McKeon. And this was actually knitted in some Malabrigo lace in the Bobby Blue colourway. Oh, I'm quite impressed with myself for remembering that. <laughs> so that is about halfway finished through the main panel. And then I've got to do some side... Um, picking up stitches down the side. And that shouldn't take any time at all. So that... I'm going to really work hard on this for the next coming weeks. So I'd been working on the Teasel socks, the patterned by Teresa Shingler. And I've done this gorgeous patterny bit. How lovely is that? How clever. This pattern is so, so clever. Um, and this is the yarn that the actual design was done in. And they're beautiful sort of blossom stitches I think that's what she calls them I've never come across this stitch before um, I don't know whether Teresa designed it herself but it is so pretty so this is the cuff of the sock and then there's like a patterned area I've now finished this sort of blossom stitch um, pattern and I'm going to do the sort of heel flap bit so they're quite short socks but they're lovely I'm really looking forward to wearing those that's really nice. So that's the the yarn is also by Teresa Shingler in the Teasel colourway. And the Teasel is the name of the pattern as well. So that's really good. So a lovely viewer called Marie had sent wanted to send me some yarn to test out. And I'll show you the yarn first. It's this absolutely gorgeous yarn, and the base is a baby camel and silk. So it is so 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 soft. Um, and this colourway is called um, rhubarb crumble, which is absolutely gorgeous. Makes me want to eat rhubarb crumble. <laughs> so the yarn company that Marie has is called Mint Bee Yarn. And it's such a lovely aesthetic on her cards. Really pretty. So she's on Etsy. Um, and you can find her if you search Mint Bee Yarn or Mint Bee and you will love it. So I've been knitting this sock head hat and you can, I think because it's stocking stitch, you can really see how beautiful um, the colourway is dyed up. It's really lovely. So I've done four inches of rib. This is a free pattern, so, and there's quite a few inches of stocking stitch, which I'm really enjoying doing because it's really, really soft. Nice. So I did consider making this as a gift, but I think I might have to keep it myself. I don't know why I have to rub things on my chin, that's the test. Um, but I did. I was concerned to start with that I thought that the baby camel wasn't quite so stretchy, but actually, actually it's really, really lovely and soft and stretchy material that's um, knitted up from there. I think that these might be 3.5mm needles. So those are knitted on my higher, higher sharp needles. Um, and I'm really looking forward to wearing it. So that's lovely. So if you're into really soft, um, high quality yarn for Christmas gifts or anything, that would be perfect. I definitely recommend Mint Bee Yarns. So thank you so much, Marie, for just sending me some of your lovely yarn to test out. Absolutely gorgeous. I have got another object that I'm working on as well. But I'm going to show you it in a later section because it's related to that section. First of all, I'm going to talk to you about sewing. So my first um, object that I've been working on with sewing is my shirt dress. And I shall get Barbara to come and show it to you. 
So here we are, this is the shirt dress at the moment. You may see that you, you might be able to see buttons, but they're my pins with button heads on them. <laughs> so I haven't finished putting the buttons on yet, and I haven't finished the collar. I've just pinned it like that because I thought it looked nicer than just done right up to the neck. So this pattern is the McCall 6696, and I'm doing this view here with the short sleeves. Um, it's a button down shirt dress, um, and this is what I've got so far. So I've I've actually hemmed the bottom already. I don't know why I really have to show you this, but there you go. I've hemmed the bottom and finished the placket at the front. Um, all the inside seams are done by um, French seams, and I followed. I can just about say I think <laughs> I followed the kittenish behaviour set of tutorials on YouTube which were really really useful I'm really pleased I had a go at this so far we'll have to see whether I like actually wearing it <laughs> when I finished it so this I showed you last time the material was a chambray from Fabrics Galore um, I ordered it online um, and it's a really really nice drape to it really pretty um, and I'll just show you the back as well. I'm not quite sure whether this is going to gape a bit too much when I actually wear it. I'll have to see once I've got the collar on. But there's a there's like a waistband here that I've top stitched down. I've used a lot of top stitching rather than having to hand sew on the inside because I think that the sort of shirt dress style is it fits with top stitching anyway. So I'm looking forward to having a go at the collar. Um, before the next episode, so hopefully get the whole dress finished. Um, I know that Tina from Simply and Stitches has had a go at doing this dress and she didn't like how the collar laid on her, so I'll just have to see how mine sews up because I haven't sewn uh, like a shirt since I was about 16 or something. <laughs> I've always done other sort of styles of um, clothing. I've never really been into shirts because I was always thinking, oh, they'll gape. Um, but actually, I think because this is sort of fitted to the cup size it should have a better fit. What I'll do is I'll show you the dress in a better um, full view when I've finished it in the next episode but this is where I am so far. I'm not quite sure whether I, I like the sleeves perhaps a bit shorter I'll see how it turns out and I can always hem them a little bit shorter once I finish the whole dress. Um, I did find that the placket piece was a little bit on the short side for the way that I'd hemmed the bottom of the skirt so I think that the pattern suggests that you leave um, quite a large allowance for, for hemming the bottom of the dress but and obviously the placket is then shorter so I didn't hem it quite as short as they suggested um, so the placket was just long enough I had to make it fit <laughs> but it's okay now um, so hopefully that'll be, that'll fit nicely. So I'll show you that in the next episode. As this dress has been taking me so long to do, I haven't actually done much more sewing as such to show you. So it's taken such a long time. I have actually got my top on that I showed you um, in the previous episodes. <laughs> that wasn't a ex very exciting view, was it? Sorry. <laughs> so I've got my cross stitch next to show you so I haven't done loads and loads well it feels like I've spent quite a few hours on this um, but it doesn't look like I've done loads so this time I've done the four trees either side of the birds so that's a little a nice little addition to my little sampler I really like the colours of those I think they're really quite pretty I've took it off the um, the cue snap as I wanted to move it onto the next section as you can see where the cue snaps be <laughs> I was getting to the edges so I'm gonna have to move it and um, do other sections of the cross stitch so that's coming along nicely I showed you in the previous episode I've been doing some dyeing of fabric and I decided to test out um, a piece that I dyed using the ice dyeing technique and make a little bag from it um, I'll open it up so you can see the the fabric that I've put in there. So this is the paler sheet of fabric that I dyed um, which I thought was quite pretty with some pinks and yellows and blues there and I made it into a drawstring bag. I think 
that I could have probably done with making the bag a bit taller because it looks a little bit dumpy but it's big enough for what I wanted to put in it so I've put a couple of little pockets inside there on my label like I normally do. I did actually put a gypsum cotton as a lining but it really creases badly with it being a, a drawstring so I don't think I'll be using the Egyptian cotton lining for the drawstring in the future but I am actually converting to drawstrings after the one I made for the giveaway um, I might have to make myself a few more I'm normally a, a zip kind of bag girl <laughs> so that's come out quite nicely Sorry, it's blowing out a little bit. The light isn't particularly good today. Um, I'm just going to test out how the dye stays on the fabric and whether it washes well when I wash it. And then I might be putting some of those um, fabrics in, well, made into bags into my shop as well. But I just wanted to make sure that the, the dye is nice and fast so that people don't put it in the washing machine and then it just dye everything else. <laughs> I suppose you could hand wash it but it's nice to know that it's the dye is nice and fixed so what have I got next I've got my onto bobbin lace now this is going to be a bit more difficult to show you so I've been working on this lace doily for a little while and I hadn't shown it for you for a little while because it's a little bit boring um, but now I've got quite a long way round um, the circle, I, you can kind of see how it's going to come out in the end. So I've left pins right round the far edge um, on both sides so that the, it keeps its shape. But then I've taken the pins out from the centre once it's left sort of a day to, to sort of set into shape. Because um, I've only got a certain number of pins anyway. <laughs> so you end up running out. But I have to leave the pins in at least... Um, sort of overnight to set the shape um, that the thread's gone into. So there we are. Not quite sure what exactly I'm going to use it for because I think it'll be too delicate to put to use as a proper doily, but we'll see. I might use it as a, a piece to put on in a frame or something. So this is quite cool. I've got my bobbins in one of these stitch holders to keep them in the right order. So those of you who think that I might get them all tangled, it's fine. They're all in order. They're all in the stitch markers, uh, stitch markers, stitch holders. So they're useful. So there we go. Just give you a bit more of a close up there. What I shall do is I'll take some footage of me doing a little bit more bobbin lace and pop it at the end of the podcast if you're interested in seeing that because I know that um, I quite often get people asking me how it's done. I will be planning on doing some new tutorials um, on various things but I'm just going to try and get used to this new software first before I start planning <laughs> and trying to do videos when I don't know how to use the software yet. So it might be next week, uh, well or in a couple of weeks by the time I start putting up tutorials on YouTube as well. So that's my um, bobbin lace for this time and I've been doing a little bit more dyeing. So I've been showing you some of my fabric dyeing that I've been up to but I've been having a play around with some more of my yarn dyeing so I've done quite a bit of this in the past but I just I just fancied a real proper mess around with what I can what sort of effects I can get um, from just messing with yarn and some acid dyes. So I started with this yarn, which I've already caked up and started knitting, hence I have got a, a work in progress in this section. So this is a very subtle grey with some pale blue and pink bits in there. I don't think it's picking the blue up very well on this camera. Um, but that's quite pretty. I was quite pleased with how that came out. And I just wanted to see how it knitted up and what the base was like because I hadn't um, used this before. So this is how it sort of started to knit up with some sort of micro striping of the blue and the pink on the grey. And I love grey. I think it's fantastic. Um, just such a lovely staple. So I'm quite pleased with how that's knitting up. And you can see that there's the grey is quite tonal as well. I was trying to get a variegated, well not variegated, but a tonal effect of the of the grey yarn. Um, and then I was me playing around with some more of the pinks and the uh, blues as well and I got some darker colours going. So these two um, 
are a similar sort of theme. One's more pink than the other. I was just playing around with some speckles as well. Here you can see I've got some tiny little speckles of blue on the grey. So that was quite fun. This one's a little bit more purple. Um, I had an idea that I wanted to do some autumn yarn, but this is not come out how I wanted it to at all but I'll show it to you anyway it's a little bit on the yellow side I should have added some darker colours in there but I was a bit scared putting too much brown into the dye pot <laughs> so there we go that's my sort of autum autumnal one that I was having to go with I was then playing around with some Christmassy sort of themes so I first of all I dyed this one with some sort of quite harsh green and red speckles and I decided that what would happen if I did like more of a delicate speckle so this is what I come out with then I think I prefer the delicate speckle um, just so that it's not so sort of in your face and it's, this yarn's actually got a bit of a sparkle to it I'm not sure whether you can see so I've had a bit of a mess around these are just a few of the ones that I sort of come up with but I'm gonna have a bit more of a play with that I have to order some more yarn to have a mess with <laughs> so that's what I've been dyeing this time and I think we might be on to Blast from the Past now. This is the oldest quilt. This is the first proper quilt that I ever made. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it all in. But it's made out of a charm pack, I think, um, that I bought quite a few years ago. And it's, it's a sort of a, a lap quilt that I made up um, with some patchwork pieces in these beautiful sort of muted tones if I look at it closely now I think oh dear that's not very good at all but I still like the colours which is good I might take the binding off at some point and redo it um, because it wasn't done particularly well it's difficult to get it all in shot but you get the idea so that's one of the quilts that I use for on the sofa when we're watching TV and the back is I just used a strip of one of the colourways that were on the front um, and then just plain like a, a cream a cream fabric with like a very subtle leaf print don't look so closely at the binding because it's appalling <laughs> so that's the first quilt that I'd ever made um, I can't tell you how many years ago it was must have been eight years I think think oh gosh I don't know where the time goes so that's my bit of a blast from the past to show you I haven't had much time to do a lot of quilting lately so I thought I'd show you some quilting that I'd done previously I have a couple of projects that I really need to get free motion quilting to show you on one of the next episodes so I'm um, now I've mentioned it I'm gonna have to do it <laughs> so we've got gadget next the gadget for this episode is my bodkin and straw. <laughs> so the bodkin is basically um, sort of a large needle, but instead of a point, it's got a ball on the end, and you can see that there's a there's the eye of the needle. It doesn't actually for this purpose. You don't actually need the eye of the needle at all. You just need this ball point sort of end, and you need a straw. Now this is from McDonald's because they're nice and big. <laughs> so what I do put my straw this is basically just a square of fabric sewn around with an opening on the end with lots of thread ends hanging everywhere you put your bodkin inside the straw and turn your object inside out so this is basically the same function as using the hemostat forceps that I showed you on I don't know if it was the last episode or one before, but it just then allows you to turn something inside out nice and quickly. So I'll show you that again. You put your straw inside the item into the corner, push your bodkin into the straw and then pull your little item back on itself. So you end up with turning it inside out again. So lovely little way of doing that I 
I interchange between using that and the hemostat forceps as well for turning little things inside out. But I think that way, if you've got a very small object, it's much easier to get a straw in than trying to get the forceps inside. And you don't need to open or close um, the hemostat forceps um, when you're using that. So it's much easier for small things. So that's my gadget. And what now? I want to. Oh dear, there's not that many things. So I know that I showed you on the last episode, I'd bought some little mini skeins from Rainbow Clyde, which are called Hello September. But then Cassia put some ones for Halloween or for October on her, on her um, Instagram feed. And I was like, I need those. So these are the colors that she dyed up for, and these, she, these are called Hello October. So we've got a gorgeous um, sort of pumpkin um, colourway there. A nice bright green, because you always have to have bright green at Halloween. Some purples. Some purple and blue. And some purple as well. So those came together in the little mini skein set. But I might have ordered one of a one of a kind skein. <laughs> I looked at this when I ordered my Hello September set. And I thought, I better not. I've got too much yarn. But I gave in. I was in a weak state. <laughs> I thought, I'll just have it. It's gorgeous. So it's got these lovely little green speckles and the pink and the blue. And the little stitch marker that comes with it. Lovely. And that's Rainbow Cloud on Etsy. And this is her uh, deluxe sock yarn, which is 85% merino 15% nylon and this is called smash hits and i don't know if you're listening cassia but it's smash hits based on the magazine from i don't know was it the 90s or 80s it might even still be published now but that reminds me well the name does i can't really remember what colors were on it <laughs> it'd be lovely if it was named after the magazine but if not let me know what it is cassia it's lovely <laughs> I haven't been too bad. There's only a couple more things I've ordered and I haven't opened yet. I've got a, a yarn calendar for Christmas from lovely Lay Family Yarns. So I've got that all packaged up. Look, Kelly, I haven't opened it yet. I'm going to wait till the 1st of December to even go anywhere near it because temptation may set in. <laughs> so that's going to stay like that under the Christmas tree. Because the Christmas tree will be out way before December. <laughs> well, November anyway. So me and Kelly, who's the designer behind Lay Family Yarns, decided to do a little swap. So there's Kelly's card again. And she had this gorgeous yarn, which is named after the Bake Off. Um, the Great British Bake Off. So I thought, oh, that'd be lovely. So we swapped. I sent her some little um, Christmas tree ornaments and she sent me this gorgeous yarn. So this is really good because you get 50 grams of the coloured um, yarn and then 20 grams to go with it to make socks. So you don't end up with loads left over. Although I don't mind having loads left over. <laughs> so that's going to be a lovely pair of socks. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with my one-of-a-kind one skein yet um, from Rainbow Cloud. We'll have to see. <laughs> so that's all my confessions. I haven't been too bad. And one was a swap. And it's <laughs> I'm trying to make excuses for myself now. <laughs> oh dear. My chair is making all sorts of noises today. I do apologise. So we're on to the Ask Me Anything section now. So we've got three questions off lovely people. After this, I'm just going to mention um, what's going to be going up in my shop update. Um, and then I'll put a little clip of the bobbin lace at the very end of the podcast. So we've got three questions on the Ravelry thread to Ask Me Anything. So the first question is from Bongo Batty. And they say, I'm just casting off a top-down sweater in one by one rib. Do you have a favourite cast off or any recommendations about casting off? Um, because they normally do a cable cast off for everything. For something like a sock, I normally do a sewn bind off. Um, but because you said that you're doing one by one rib, I perhaps want to do an invisible ribbed bind off, which is still a sewn bind off. Um, 
which allows you to have lots of stretchiness there but you can't see it so obviously. Um, what I'll do is I'll slip a clip um, now of me showing how to do this special invisible ribbed bind off. So I'm just going to show you how to do an invisible ribbed bind off. So to set up you need to go purl wise through the first knit stitch and knit wise through the next purl stitch. So that's your setup. Now you're going to be starting to bind off properly. Then you do a knit wise and drop the stitch for the first stitch. Then you put your needle in purl wise the second stitch, the, the knit stitch from the end and pull through. Then you do purl wise through the the last purl stitch and pull that through and then you drop that stitch off and then you do something weird you put your needle behind the first knit stitch and then you put it knit wise through the second stitch. I don't know if you can see that. So it's behind the first stitch and knit wise into the second stitch and pull through. There we go. And then you start again um, knit wise through your first knit stitch. This seems quite complicated but once you've got it in your head it's not too bad. And then drop the stitch off and then purl into the second stitch along which is a knit stitch. My tail's getting in the way. Purl into the stitch, the purl stitch on the end and drop the stitch off. Then come behind your next stitch and go knit wise into the next stitch along. So I'll do that again. Through behind the first stitch and then through the next knit stitch along and pull. And then you can keep on going. Whoops. You can keep on going knit wise, drop, purl. Pearl wise, drop, and then that weird behind the knit stitch and knit wise through that next stitch. There we go, and then we start again. So you end up with this nice stretchy bind off that's invisible. My one by one rib isn't very neat so it's not the best example um, but there we go. Anita Bulb asked what type of editing software I used. Now this is <laughs> this is interesting because I'm switching right now um, so I used to use Windows Movie Maker but now I use, I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to use Vegas Pro 12 um, which I haven't actually yet used um, so I can't tell you how good it is, um, but I heard lots of lovely things about it, so I'm going to see. So Adam bought this for me, so if it doesn't work very well, it's his fault. <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend the, the Windows Movie Maker because I had that error with the audio being put onto the, the end of the podcast for some unknown reason. Um, but I hope that helps you, Anita. So the third question is from Susan Knitter 2, and... She says, usually usually pattern tells you to cast on stitches under the arm when separating the sleeves from the body of a jumper. She usually puts stitches on waist yarn until the body is completed and when she goes back to pick up the stitches for the sleeves there's usually a gap between the underarm stitches and the held stitches. Um, she ends up with holes then. Um, 
she's not had a problem with doing a baby cardigan where she didn't cast on more stitches but she just wondered what I did. Now I haven't got an awful lot of experience with um, garments which I hope to rectify in the future um, but it may depend on how you cast on your stitches I suppose um, or when you're picking up stitches if you just make sure that when you're picking up a stitch it doesn't cause a big hole to appear it sort of doesn't drag the, the work up so that there's a hole um, you know that that's not going to make a hole later if that makes sense um, but failing that I'm going to tell you my cheat <laughs> if you do end up with holes um, under the arm or anywhere or in when you're doing a sock um, where you're doing the heel on one of those afterthought heels for instance there's no there's nothing wrong with getting <laughs> some of the matching yarn and just sort of sewing it together to fudge it because nobody will know that <laughs> I don't see where there's a problem with doing that as long as you then weave in the ends carefully and make sure they don't unwind I'm sorry that's not very good advice um, I feel that I because I haven't done an awful lot of garments I think I've only knitted about three full garments um, in my sort of knitting life I really want to do more garments in the future though so I may be able to give some better advice then <laughs> so sorry about my rubbish rubbish advice so lastly we've just got a little bit of information on my shop update so I've done some autumn style um, fabrics in sort of sock size bags there's some beautiful gold leaves on the red background there's some different gold orange and green leaves and I've actually put a sort of green um, lining in this because I thought that went really well and then we've got a gold on green leafy background with a nice red inside as a contrast and you can see there's a little pocket so I always put little pockets in these and then I've started doing some Christmas bags so I've got there's literally just one of these because I had some fabric left over in my stash of some little cherubs and I thought it still looks rather Christmassy, uh, even though they're sort of cherubs instead of, well, I suppose they could be angels. They could be angels. And I found some gold sort of sparkly fabric to go as the lining. And I've got some little penguins. So all these ones I've made so far are sock size, but there will be some larger ones with different fabrics um, in the shop update, which I haven't got round to making up yet so we've got some mittens I thought perfect for a sort of sock size because mittens are that sort of size too um, lots of these have got white linings in and then these cute little snowmen yeah I love this I might need to keep one of those I started on some DPN cases and we've got some little Christmas tree DPN cases with some green lining with my poppers on there we go and then I've got just a couple of these with the autumn leaves on so far so um, I will have some more things in the shop update as well I just wanted to see uh, show you what I'd got ready so far so I think that's everything so I'm going to a comic-con on the weekend with Adam so I, I don't suppose I'll get much crafting done this weekend but I hopefully make up for it the weekend after but we might see some interesting things um, at the comic convention <laughs> which Adam really loves looking at then and I quite enjoy it too so it's 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 good fun to spend the day together so I shall tell you a little bit about that um, on the next episode um, I unfortunately the Comic Con is on the same day as Yarndale, so I can't go, and it's the opposite end of the country. <laughs> We're going over to Southampton. Um, Adam's got some friends down there that we meet up with as well, so that'll be rather lovely. So I hope to chat to you about it a bit more in the next episode. Lovely to see you. Hope you're doing lots and lots of crafting. Um, see you next time. Bye.